part of the cloud. And then I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so you can see my slides for today. Let's see, I guess I'm gonna share there. So don't mind me while I just push random buttons. And, oh goodness, now I can't see what I wanna push. Sorry, I can never figure out Zoom. Let's try that again. Perfect. All right. We are beginning. Thanks again for everyone joining. Hopefully you can see my screen. We'll just start at the top here. So this is the uh, Q1 2017 supporter webcast. Uh, we'll be doing this every quarter throughout the year. Your support really matters and helps us to fund Drupal.org infrastructure and our engineering teams so that we could Continue, continually unite the community to keep building the software and also do some other special uh, things such as uh, promoting Drupal, amplifying all the successes that you're having with clients um, through the front page and other sections on Drupal.org. Um, so let me go ahead and get started. We'll just have a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you could keep your um, channel muted, that way we won't hear your background noise and it'll be easier for people to hear me. Uh, we do have a chat window, so if you have questions, feel free to chat, uh, send the questions there, and we'll look for it. Um, and then if there's anything you want to share with the world, uh, we just ask that you tag us at Drupal Association. That's our handle. And today we're just going to go over some Drupal Association news that we thought that you might like to hear as supporters as well as let you know some things that we're doing to support the uh, community's contribution journey, and also what we're doing to be good partners in the adoption journey and helping evaluators be informed and inspired about Drupal and uh, connected to all of you. Before I get going, I just wanna say we're all in great company with amazing supporters. Uh, we have the signature supporters as well as our premium supporters. And then the supporters, the supporter level, which uh, we're going to be changing that name to classic so that it's not as confusing. And as you know, we also have not just digital agencies supporting us, but we have technology companies that know that by working with Drupal, they can, we can go to market with stronger solutions. And they know that they're benefiting from this and wanting to give back as well. And in addition to that, we have our hosting supporters who understand that one plus one equals three. Uh, and they too are really uh, benefiting by being part of Drupal Solutions um, and wanting to give back. And so we have our premium and classic hosting supporters as well. So why don't we dive in and I can cover some Drupal Association news. Uh, you might have seen the banners on Drupal.org that community elections have begun. We've been tweeting this out and um, putting it out in our newsletters. We have a board that consists of 12 people. Their job is to come up with a strategic direction uh, for the association. And then staff's job is to figure out how to operationalize and exec execute on that. Um, there are 10 board seats that the board decides how to fill those, but there are two seats where the community elects in a community member. And that's really important because we want to make sure that the community has a say in what kind of voice is on the board to represent their needs. Um, our board members made up of all kinds of board members, agency owners to, um, uh, gosh, business managers at large digital agencies and system integrators and lots of different perspectives. But this is the chance for the community to say, we want this voice on the board and these perspectives to be part of the discussions and the strategy setting. Um, and so we are uh, in, the, in the community election process, we're in the, we just completed the phase where community members self-nominate themselves. We have 16 candidates. And now until um, March 4th, the community can go and review each of the 16 candidate profile pages, um, decide for themselves which perspective 
they think is the most important to have on the board for the next two years. Um, and then we'll do uh, the voting shortly thereafter. That'll be March 6th to the 18th. So we just encourage you to tell your employees to get involved. All they need is to have a Drupal.org profile page for at least a year um, and to be eligible to vote. So we just ask that you get the word out so that we have a lot of participation. Um, the other bit of news is that we are working on the supporter program benefits. We want to just create as much value as we can for you um, because it really matters that you're willing to support the funding of Drupal.org. Um, it's certainly a, more of an operational expense than a marketing expense in the sense that it's you're basically funding a tool like you might for Atlassian and your JIRA license. You know, this is the tool that we all use to build the software and download it, and it needs a lot of feed and care for it to continue on and, and be sustainable and keep improving as well. However, we want to make sure it has some, some business value. And there are some things that we're, we're doing already. You might have noticed that your position in the marketplace um, has changed. Uh, we just evolved the contribution credit system and Tim Lennon will talk about that some more shortly but now um, the algorithm will look at your level of support for the association um, which um, level you are as a supporting partner and give you so many credits uh, just to thank you and reward you for that because the whole community benefits and we'd like to make sure that there's some business value in that for you as well. And hopefully that has helped you bump up a bit in the marketplace. Um, we're also looking at creating ways to highlight your successes. Um, so we are looking at how to amplify case studies on the front page, as well as sharing your business news in the news section on the front page as well. Uh, we know technical evaluators are going to this part of the website and we want to do our job to help connect you and let you inspire and inform them through your, your content. Uh, so those are some, some things that we're excited to be working on and we'll have more of an update for you um, before the end of this quarter. Another bit of news is uh, we have our first camp supporting us. That is Drupal Camp London. We're just so thankful that um, this camp has been successful and grown over the years uh, and has the funds now to give back to the association as a premium supporting partner. It's really exciting. They've invited Delana Lang, our account manager that many of you are working with, to come out and speak at their business summit. So she'll be there. And we uh, hope that if you're there too, you'll take some time to sit down with her. She's always uh, an ear for what we can be doing more for the business community and U.S. supporters. Um, and we are also um, in the process of releasing the Drupal on Vienna sponsorship packages so she can answer any questions you might have about that and and what this event um, uh, you know basically what this event will be focusing on and she can answer those kinds of questions for you too while she's there at that event so let me uh, go ahead and start talking about some updates on both the contribution journey and the adoption journey um, side of, uh, of you know helping to make Drupal thrive this is a frame that I use often just to talk about our role in, um, in helping to get Drupal to be stronger, both on the contribution side and the adoption side. And we can't do it alone. We always do it in partnership with the community, but we wanna be the best partners possible. And obviously your funding is what's allowing us to be the best partner possible. So let me just kind of break it down on what we're doing to help make it easier for the community to contribute and also to give you air coverage in terms of promoting Drupal out into the marketplace. So when I look at the contribution journey, I, I break it down into three areas, uh, people, process, and technology. I think about do we have enough people? What skills do we need to be uh, attracting? Um, do they have the right skill level and how can we level that, that skill up? Um, when I think about the process, I think about how they are working together and what does that workflow look like and where is there friction that we could uh, eliminate, especially in the, the channels on Drupal.org. 
And then lastly, the technology, of course, are the issue queues and Composer and Drupal CI. And are we providing the right tools that you need to, um, to come together and build the software? So I just like to kind of give you a little more insight into my frame as I think about how we can best serve the community on the contribution side. Uh, one way that we are helping is with our community cultivation grant program. Um, it's managed by uh, three community members, uh, Mike Anello, uh, oh gosh, now I'm forgetting names. Uh, I think it's Thomas Turnbull and Amanda Mates, M-A-T-Z. And uh, we give them uh, a pool of money. Community members who would like to do something to further Drupal apply for a grant. Um, and if, if it really makes sense, and we really think that giving some money to this, this person or this group will help amplify Drupal or accelerate um, contribution, then we, we give them the grant. And just recently, we just gave some funds to um, developer days in Europe. It's where a lot of advanced Drupal developers come together this year in Spain uh, to, to move the project forward in a big way. So we're really excited to be a part of that and to help this group of people. Um, and there's, there'll be other news about how we're using that grant money as well. But I thought that was just something that was notable that just recently happened that I wanted to share. Um, so we have a few other things on the contribution side. I'd like to um, hand it over to Tim Lennon. And uh, Tim, why don't you tell us a little bit about the contribution journey? Sure, I'd be really happy to. And first of all, let me say thank you to um, all of you among the supporters. Um, uh, for several of these things that I'm talking about, people have reached out to me individually or called out on Twitter. Um, their sort of appreciation and support for some of these new initiatives, as well as their suggestions and, and ways that they think that we can continue to improve these. Um, so I really appreciate that feedback and, and please continue to reach out. Um, I'm at Tim Lennon on Twitter. Um, in terms of the uh, contribution journey and um, a big change that we've made, um, I want to talk about the contribution credit system as it relates to the marketplace. So Megan alluded to this earlier, um, and let me, I'll give a brief overview of the history and, and talk about uh, what we've done at the beginning of January here. So back at DrupalCon Amsterdam, uh, that was in 2014 actually, Dries laid out a vision for crediting users and their sponsoring organizations for code contributions to Drupal. Um, so more than a year ago now, we introduced our first iteration on that concept, uh, which is called issue credits, which by now you're probably familiar with. Issue credits are a way for users in the issue queues to attribute any work that they do in a comment, either as a volunteer or as sponsored by an organization or on behalf of a customer or an end user organization. So um, this edition kind of expanded on Dries' initial idea, which was just supposed to be about you know, get commit messages and made it something that applies to any kind of contribution that happens in an issue. So that includes things like uh, documentation and code reviews um, and any, any sort of work that happens um, where people are contributing in the issue queues. But that's not the only kind of contribution that we have. Um, there's, um, you know, we recognize that people contribute time, they contribute talent, they contribute treasure. So it's always been our goal to expand the system and how it recognizes both individual contributors and how it incentivizes the economy of contribution in the marketplace. So the big update that we made in January um, was changing different types of contribution that are recognized and factored into the marketplace ranking algorithm. So um, sponsoring organizations are now, well, all organizations are now recognized for the following factors. Um, firstly, issue credits are still incredibly important. Um, so uh, moving the project forward is still vital um, and those code contributions are still important. So issue credits are still the most highly weighted factor in the marketplace, um, but we also weight those credits based on how widely used the project is that someone's contributing to. And that way, um, projects, contrib projects that are used by a wide part of the market uh, receive a higher level of credit, core receives the most, um, and that helps make that uh, contribution to the most important modules, the most important projects, uh, more highly incentivized. Um, secondly, uh, we've added credit for Drupal 8 case studies. Um, good storytelling about successful projects in Drupal 8 um, helps improve the adoption journey. And when evaluators come to drupal.org and look at the case studies uh, that we have there, we want to be showing them the latest and greatest um, uh, stories about um, ambitious projects built in Drupal 8. 
so we provide uh, credit in the marketplace for each Drupal 8 case study that an organization has. Um, as Megan mentioned, we also provide a uh, set of credit based on supporting partner level. Um, so to recognize that the financial contributions that you all make support the association and support the work we do, um, we factor that into the credits based on the level of the supporter program. And it can be pretty significant. Um, finally, um, there's a concept of project supported where the maintainer of a project can say these organizations or this organization um, make it possible for me to maintain this project on Drupal.org. Uh, it's separate from the issue queues. It's a way to recognize those contributions that might take place outside of issue queues that help uh, further the, the um, advancement of a particular project or module on Drupal.org. Um, and so we recognize that as well. Um, so these new factors um, have uh, been put in place at the beginning of January, and you've seen probably how that's changed the, um, uh, the rankings in the marketplace. Um, they're summarized in the sidebar of the marketplace. If you want to learn more about each of those ways to contribute um, and how to uh, increase your own contributions. Um, and we've mon been monitoring it carefully because there's some big changes and we know that we need to be careful with how we manage the economy of contribution. But right now we're very pleased with, uh, with the result. Um, so if you go to the next slide, Megan, um, to talk about process and the contribution journey, um, there's, a, there's been a long-standing issue um, that some of you may be aware of in the community in that um, anybody can come to Drupal.org and create what's called a sandbox project. Um, it's a way to sort of start adding a code contribution in the form of a new module. Um, but in order to make that a full project with full releases that's more visible to anyone else who comes to Drupal.org, um, you've had to go through a manual code review process with uh, volunteer contributors. And that process, it's been in place for a good 10 years and it's cumbersome and dependent on the availability of, uh, of volunteers. So what we're focusing on um, right now um, is a revamp of that process that is going to eliminate the manual review. Um, basically, um, what we're doing is allowing any user who's um, on Drupal.org and opted into the terms of service uh, to go ahead and create full projects and full releases. Uh, we're changing the security review process to be an opt-in process to receive security advisory coverage for your project. Um, and we're adding signal so that we preserve the sense of code quality. Drupal has a tremendous reputation for high code quality. So um, we're putting in place more signals about which projects have opted into code review visible right on the project pages. That's going to be visible in the update status page of any installed Drupal site as well. Um, and lastly, we're going to be designing a system to incentivize these peer code reviews, not as a gate on creating new projects and new integrations for the, the technology used, but instead as an opt-in process that might be part of ratings and reviews for projects on Drupal.org. That's a future initiative, that's a, a follow-up um, as we uh, do this project applications revamp, but it's something we're thinking about. Um, let's see, and then lastly here in the technology section, um, we're pretty excited because we've made a few changes to um, uh, some key, uh, key sort of project infrastructure our project support technology that we as the engineering team have been building and supporting. Um, and in the last quarter, a lot of great things have happened. So um, Composer, the Composer facade, which allows um, any uh, developer to use the PHP Composer tool to, to, to use Drupal projects and allows Drupal uh, code to depend on external PHP libraries. The support for that is now stable. Um, as of this quarter, it's no longer in beta. Uh, Megan, you're, you've got a pop-up that's at our slide. Um, so support for Composer is now stable. Um, that means that we have quite a few um, sites that are now using Composer to build their sites. This is um, becoming rapidly the standard workflow for uh, large-scale Drupal sites and for managing um, some sort of enterprise level um, Drupal sites, and it's fully supported for both core and contrib. We also have been adding features and improvements to Drupal CI. Um, 
There are now more PHP environments. We're now testing Drupal against um, the most recent versions of, of PHP 7 as well against the, as against the minimum supported versions. We support testing uh, Drupal CI with contr uh, contrib projects that have composer dependencies. And as you can see, this accelerated, for example, um, the maintainer of commerce um, with their work on their, completing their port to Drupal 8. Um, and uh, so we're really excited about that. That's going to really help a lot of the contributed projects keep moving. Um, and lastly, we've added, um, with the help of community member Mile23, um, Megan, are you still there? Can you hear us? What we might need to do, I'm going to try sharing screens since Megan's internet connection may have dropped. Um, I can see that Megan's there. She looks muted. She's muted. Yeah, I think she's, she was saying her internet was flaky earlier, so she might be frozen. Are you there? Megan, would you like yeah, me to share? I'm here now. Sorry, my apologies. Should I scare, sh start sharing screen or? Sure. Okay. Uh, is that showing up now? It is. Okay. So then the last, um, the last major thing is that with the help of community member Mile23, um, who's just a great member of the community, um, we have code style checking. So when you, as you may know, when, um, when your developers contribute code to Drupal.org, we have coding standards, and now we can automate the review of that and in fact automatically generate patches to fix code style issues, which will save the project a tremendous amount of time since that no longer is a manual process that volunteers have to do. It can be something that can be uh, done by our test bots. Um, yeah, so those are, those are our uh, sort of technology updates from the engineering team. We really appreciate your support and that feedback that we see from you in our comments when we announce these features and on Twitter. So thanks very much for that. And I'll hand it back to Megan to talk about the adoption journey. Great. Thanks, Tim. And everyone, sorry for little technical issues on my side. I'm reporting live from Florida. I went to Drupal Camp Florida over the weekend, spoke there, and now I'm kind of floating until I go to my next <laughs> meeting, which will be a board retreat in DC. So um, thanks for your patience. But we're really excited to keep sharing, sharing the news. So let me talk about the adoption journey. So Tim, if you don't mind advancing the slide. So you might have heard the news already that we just launched Drupal.org industry pages. If you go to Drupal.org front page, you'll see a new panel's been added that connects you to uh, a page that's just dedicated to Drupal and media and publishing, Drupal and higher ed, and Drupal and government. We worked with um, end users in the industry, each of these industries, to come up with a, a story that helps um, uh, educate and inspire uh, potential end users in those industries, um, and then to connect them with experts such as yourself to to learn more and to go further along in the adoption journey. And the story is is quite simple. It's something that I know all of you are sharing all the time with your clients, which is um, you know, Drupal. Drupal has great success. Uh, it's been adopted by great names uh, in the industry. Um, we have the stats to prove it, the brand names um, to back it, and that Drupal solutions um, come together because you're integrating Drupal with third-party technologies, community-contributed modules, um, and the right hosting solution. And that we have this amazing ecosystem around Drupal that gives you flexibility and choice. Um, we highlight uh, the different problem sets that Drupal tends to solve in each of the industries, and that came from the end users themselves who were telling us why they chose Drupal. Uh, and we also use the page as a way to connect the, the visitor with um, some featured technology vendors, as well as highlight case studies that were provided by agencies that sponsored the page and the work that we did. Um, we hope it's... Um, you know, we know it's going to be a great tool to help the community um, with their sales effort because it's a neutral site that has a good story to tell, good content to share. Um, it's also localized. So if you're in Europe, you're going to be showing um, European 
uh, case studies. So if it's government, you'll see the city of London versus in the US, it's the Department of Energy. Um, and then again, for Asia has their own as well. So there's Australian case studies. Um, and, it, and so we know it's going to be a great tool for the community. We're getting excellent feedback. And of course, we're connecting um, visitors to agencies and, and to the featured vendors as uh, a lead generation opportunity for them. Um, but it's also a way that we could monetize this experience in, in, in a way that's helpful and contextual to the visitor. Um, and of course, we do that because we need to pay the bills <laughs> for Drupal.org and um, our other mission work that we do. So this is something that we're trying. It's a six month period that we're working with these companies and they're all partnering with us and sharing data so we can optimize the page for the best visitor experience possible. Um, so we'll be learning a lot. We'll be sharing our learning. Um, we are going to keep expanding these verticals. Um, been working with um, supporters to find out what would be the next ones we might want to consider. Um, so we have healthcare and nonprofit and e-commerce and finance. Um, uh, gosh, you know, I just have heard need and want for different verticals. And of course, there's the demand out there for them. Um, and, and the other thing I just want to point out um, about these pages and in the sponsorship opportunity was this is a very limited sponsoring opportunity it's kind of unique and we definitely try to keep this um you know the a lens of fairness and being neutral when it comes to these opportunities for example a DrupalCon exhibit hall scales right we have maybe 80 vendors in there um and this is very very small so we wanted to be mindful about what's the right way to approach this opportunity uh, and we said that we don't want anyone just to be able to buy in we um, came up with a contribution ranking system where we could see who was providing uh, the most code and was also a supporting partner and how long they were a supporter. Uh, and then we started to invite people based on that ranking. Um, and so that's the approach that we used. We, we got some positive feedback from that saying thank you for you know, acknowledging that I've given a lot and, and that, you know, this is a nice reward to have the special invitation. Um, it's also nice to hear from small companies that were like, hey, we're not quite ready. We haven't gotten into any verticals, but it's nice to be considered for this opportunity based on our contribution. Some of them passed, some of them took advantage of it. But, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know, I think we might be onto something and I'm always open to your feedback as well. Um, and so, you know, but what I really love about this um, project is that it's it's not to me. I certainly am glad that we had um, good staff input, end user input, sponsor input, community feedback, and we used all of that to come up with these pages. Uh, I'm just really excited to see where this goes and how we all benefit from it. You can go to the next slide. And then the other area where we're helping uh, raise awareness for um, evaluators um, and doing our bit to inspire and inform and, and then connect them to you is at DrupalCon. Um, we are gonna have DrupalCon in Baltimore at the end of April. It's our first time on the East Coast in over five years. So I'm certainly very excited as an East Coaster myself, but also just to make it easy for everyone on the Eastern seaboard to come to, to Baltimore. It's really accessible and we're gonna be on the Inner Harbor. It's gonna be a great week of Drupal celebration. Um, but one thing that I want to um, really emphasize is that we have an opportunity to reach beyond our community for this DrupalCon and invite people to come in and learn about the power of Drupal. And so we are investing in marketing and it's already started where we are going beyond our community, reaching out and inviting people to come in. Um, we are we had done research about what they would want to hear. Um, So we are putting that kind of content together and making sure it's highlighted in our marketing materials. Uh, we also want to make it easy for you to 
um, reach out to your database of potential clients and existing clients. And you're going to hear from us soon with coupon codes that you can use to bring them in um, and create a whole experience for them and let them show um, you can you know have the opportunity to show them that, that you are a trusted advisor in Drupal and um, and you can give them a great experience. You might want to take them out to dinner and have your clients talk to your potential clients and let them sell each other on Drupal and on your services. Um, so you'll get some more information about that, but just wanted to really emphasize how we're reaching beyond the community uh, for this Drupal con to invite more people to, to join us and learn about Drupal. Uh, one way that we're doing it uh, is the vertical summits. We started this a few years ago. We're really leaning into, into this this year. Um, vertical summits are a one-day event on Monday where um, peers come together. They, they talk about how they're using Drupal in a certain industry. It's a great opportunity for you to send your, your potential clients here to let their peers sell them on Drupal and show them how they can do more amazing things with the software. Uh, so we'll have nonprofit summit for the first time. That'll be pretty big, especially being in DC's backyard. And again, for the same reason, we're going to have a government summit um, and, and really reach out into the, the DC markets and, and pull people in. But of course, it's great for um, your, your state governments and your, um, your local government as well. So uh, we'll be doing marketing around that summit. Then of course, media and publishing. We started for the first time last year with success and we're going to expand that one. Higher Ed Summit was the first one we've ever had and it is incredibly successful. We're making it a, a larger space this year so more people can come in. So that's a little bit on the summits. I highly recommend that you check them out or have your clients check them out. It's a great way for peers to sell peers on Drupal. Another thing that we're doing uh, that's new this year is the Supporter Summit. So as you may recall, in the past we've had a business summit. And you know, there's, um, it really attracts the smaller, newer business that is just starting to adopt Drupal and might have some questions around like, how do I get involved and what is marketing and how do I handle finance? Maybe I'm five people and I want to go to 10. And we, what we heard was that many of our supporters have outgrown that. Um, and they've come to the business summit and it's good for networking, but they weren't getting content value out of it. Um, and many supporters said, please create something for us that we're a little, we're more mature as a business and un understanding Drupal. So can you create something for us as well? And so we have a special event that will be on Monday called the Supporter Summit. Um, it will be a four hour uh, networking breakfast followed by some programming like panels that will be uh, some more advanced programming. This will be led by Jeff Walpole at phase two. Um, and, and so we'll be sending an email out shortly with what that programming will look like. Um, the cost is $150 and um, you'll, you'll receive more details shortly, but we hope you'll join us. Um, I think it'll be a good opportunity for, for our supporters to network with each other. So those are the main things that we're doing this quarter um, for on the adoption side, as well as the contribution side. Uh, and at this time, I'd love to just open it up for any questions. I do see one question, um, and Tim, this will be for you. Composer is great, but what about issue credits and developing on GitHub? Uh, that's a really good question. Yeah, there's still this, um, this, this larger concern that right now the credit system, of course, is limited to activities that take place on Drupal.org itself, and there isn't a, a good way to um, parse contributions that for projects that aren't hosted on Drupal.org anymore. There are people who host their modules on GitHub and do their issue development there. Um, it's not a problem that we have a solution for just yet, but it might be something where we take the um, we take that original notion of parsing git commit information um, and see if we can bring that back in in some way um, as a way to do uh, some kind of credit for external contributions to drupal.org. Um, it requires a little bit more thought and it's a little bit more complex, um, but we're, uh, we're certainly thinking about it as well. Good, he said that would be great. Uh, and Tim, the next question for you is, does uh, Drupal 7 case studies count towards the ranking or only D8? 
Uh, right now, only Drupal 8. We'd like to incentivize uh, the adoption of the new version of Drupal. And so we made the decision when building the algorithm out uh, that we'd like to um, offer that credit for the Drupal 8 case studies that people submit. Thanks. Uh, Lucy's question is, uh, will we have new categories for industry verticals on Drupal.org? And how will you decide which ones to open? Can we provide feedback? And the answer is yes, we are going to provide other verticals. We do want feedback. Lucy, I saw your email and I'm, I'm getting to it, I promise. So I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear other people's feedback. Um, the ones that I'm hearing so far range from nonprofit, e-commerce, um, healthcare, healthcare. Thank you. Life sciences, uh, finance. So I'm hearing quite a few, um, and I want to do this in bite-sized chunks. So I'm learning from the three we have today, and then once we kind of have a good recipe for success, then I'll start rolling out the other ones one at a time. Um, because it's quite a lot to coordinate with all the, the, the user research and the different types of content that we have to get from our sponsors. You are so welcome. Do we have any other questions? Uh, okay, Unleash Technologies would be interested in the nonprofit opportunity as you're wrapping up the learning phase. Excellent. Uh, should distros also have a place on Drupal.org? Yes. One of the things that Tim and I are working on, is we want to understand the adoption journey on Drupal.org as a whole. And actually, we're using an agile process to, um, to do that study and also make the improvements. We started with the redesign of the front page and started adding the content, such as the case studies, and tried Drupal, and then we moved to the industry pages. But as I mentioned, you know, we all recognize that Drupal solution is made up of the third-party technologies and hosting and distros, right? There's this whole recipe that comes together, and we really need to do a great job on Drupal.org of telling that story, including distros. I was actually just talking with Dries um, about his blog post recently where I, he even highlights open social in it, um, as well as some other ones. And, and I think there's, there's certainly uh, some work to be done on distros, uh, the marketplace, um, you know, lots of the, the key places on Drupal.org as it relates to the adoption journey. And should distros have a place in Drupal.org? We always have trouble to balance exposure for the distro we support. Right, so when we get to this section, um, and we start thinking about distros, I'm going to reach out and we'll do some research and get feedback for sure. <laughs> and you are welcome. All right, any other questions? Okay. Well, with that, um, you know, I just wanted to say thank you again. I feel like the association has just a nice list of deliverables that we've done in the last quarter. I was very proud to be able to share them with all of you. And we have much more coming down the pike and um, have uh, some more updates for you. You're, you're getting emails from Delana and Mark um, that are giving you updates every month, but we'll keep doing this webcast to keep you informed. And please know we cannot do this work without your financial support. So thank you. Um, if you have any questions or feedback for us, we want to hear from you. So you can see on the screen, Delana and Mark's email. Um, one of them are your account manager. And I am very accessible. You can always reach out to me. I'm Megan at association.triple.org. I'd love to hear from you. So with that, I'd like to conclude and just thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, everyone.